On today's episode of A Few Minutes of History, I'm going to be talking about the only winner of the Victoria Cross on D-Day, Stanley Elton Hollis. Hollis was a British recipient of the Victoria Cross, the highest and most prestigious award for gallantry in the face of the enemy that can be awarded to British and Commonwealth forces. Hollis was the company sergeant major of D Company, the 6th Battalion of the Green Howards. This battalion was one of two that were in the first wave of landings on King Sector, Gold Beach, on the morning of D-Day. By 1944, Hollis was no stranger to combat, having been evacuated with the BEF at Dunkirk. He had fought with this battalion since El Alamein and been wounded at the Battle for Primasol Bridge in Sicily. As one of the older men of the unit, he was looked up to by his younger soldiers, who often looked for him to take the lead when they got into sticky situations. 31 years old on the day of D-Day and being one of the most experienced men of the unit, he was put in charge of three machine guns and three mortar teams that were to cover the advance of the company off the beach, up the hills beyond and over crests toward their main objective, the German heavy artillery position at Mount Fleury. The first company objective of the day was a house with a distinctive round driveway that overlooked the beach. It was here that Stan performed the first of two acts of heroism that were to win him the only Victoria Cross awarded on D-Day. When Lee platoons of D Company had just passed the house, they came under fire from a machine gun hidden in a pillbox. Hollis charged some 30 yards over open ground, under fire, and he stuck his Sten gun into a pillbox and emptied the magazine. He then lay on top of the pillbox and dropped a grenade inside before jumping down and entering the fortification where he took the surviving occupant's prisoner. He then saw a slit trench leading away to a second pillbox in the garden of the house. He advanced down it alone and captured the fortification and all those inside. In all, he captured around 30 Germans single-handedly. Later, at approximately 11am, he was involved in the second action which contributed to his award. By this time, he was the acting commander of 16 platoon, its officer having been killed in action. Having spotted a German field gun hidden in the hedge, he decided to try and destroy it, taking a pee at and two Bren gun machine gunners, he crawled forward through a large rhubarb patch to get close enough to the artillery piece to try to destroy it. Unfortunately, he missed his shot, and the German gun, around a 100 yards away, turned and fired on them, but it miraculously fired over their heads. Hollis shouted with the me- to the men with him to get back, and they retreated to cover behind a farm building. Unfortunately, the men either hadn't heard him, or they were too afraid to run. Saying that he had got the men into trouble, so he better get them out, he took a Bren gun and advanced into the open, firing from the hip, to attract the attention of the field gun team. This enabled his two gunners to run back from the rhubarb patch and into cover. Astoundingly, even though he was standing in plain sight of the enemy, Hollis was not hit. In September 1944, he was awarded. He was wounded for the fifth time in the conflict and evacuated to England, where he was decorated with the Victoria Cross by King George in October 1944. After the war, he returned to Middlesbrough, becoming a truck driver, getting married and having two children. Stanley Hollis died in February 1972 and there can be no greater tribute to a man regarded by military experts as one of the finest Victoria Cross winners of all time. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please do like and subscribe and give me a rating, and also head over to my YouTube channel, my TikTok, and my Twitter, all at A Few Minutes of History, for more bonus content on there. We'll see you on the next one. Cheery bye.